Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com on Roku in the sports section, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. There are a couple of articles today, this morning, it's August the 15th, 2013, on a great website, BoxingScene.com, right? If you're watching this video weeks from now, just Google these articles, right? You don't have to look at the articles the day that the, these videos post. You can actually Google them later and track them down. Now, one of the biggest sources of information that um, boxing hardcore fans like me use, quite frankly, are the opinions of former fighters. I can't think of a group that knows what happens in the ring more than former fighters, maybe former referees, but these are the guys who have been in the line of fire. They've been on the front lines. They know what fighters deal with both in training and walking into the ring the night of an event. Now, one of my favorite fighters, I have learned a lot about the sport just reading this guy's interviews, especially his post-fight interviews, um, is George Foreman. George Foreman is a guy who, quite frankly, has thought about the game on a very deep level. He was the heavyweight champion in the 1970s. He destroyed Joe Fraser not once, but twice, go to the record books, right? Once to take his title. Um, he also fought Ken Norton. He destroyed Ken Norton. And I mean destroyed Ken Norton. That's one of the more brutal moments I've seen in the sport, right? He fought Muhammad Ali. Ali wisely chose not to give him a rematch. He fought Jimmy Young. In my opinion, one of history's more underrated fighters, right? He leaves the sport. He comes back. Uh, in fact, let me also point out, too, one of the fights of the 1970s is Foreman's victory over Ron Lyle, another big banger. Well, Foreman leaves the sport. He comes back. He fought Jerry Cooney. You need to look at that videotape. Of course, he regains the heavyweight title fighting Michael Moore, Right, and then he goes on to do other things. Well, George Foreman has looked at a couple of young heavyweights on the rise Andy Ruiz and Deontay Wilder. Now, here online, I've pointed out that I believe Andy Ruiz is the real deal. I think Andy Ruiz is a serious threat to the throne. I've made note of the fact that. Andy Ruiz has some of the fastest hands in the heavyweight division, and he's a puncher. He can also fight inside, and he's an excellent chess player, right? In response, YouTube Nation, at least a portion of you, keeps talking about Andy Ruiz's body, right? Ruiz doesn't look like a bodybuilder. Right, what he is though is a fighter. This is boxing. Well, let me just say, George Foreman is very impressed with Andy Ruiz. Foreman believes that Andy Ruiz, within the next two and a half years, is going to be heavyweight champion of the world. Let me just say, my own opinion is that Ruiz might be able to pull it off even faster than that. He's not going to develop into one of the best in the heavyweight division. I believe Andy Ruiz is there right now, right? Interestingly enough, though, Foreman, and let's remember, Foreman's nickname was Big George Foreman. Also, figure out Foreman's history. Foreman used to train with Sonny Liston. Right, It was Sonny Liston who taught Foreman his jab. Understand, Foreman also won the gold medal at the 1968 Olympics. This is a guy who had a life before he became 
heavyweight champion, right? And who was hanging around boxing's A-list, a former heavyweight champion, before he became heavyweight champion. And understand who Sonny Liston is. You know, Joe Lewis, of all people, talked openly about the fact that Sonny Liston was one of the best fighters he ever saw. This was before another fighter, then Cassius Clay, took Liston's title. And many, myself included, consider Cassius Clay to be one of the very best ever in the heavyweight division. Well, understand that George Foreman has been around the game for a long time. He's seen some of the bigger talents in the division's history, right? And let me just say, George Foreman has looked at Deontay Wilder, and keep in mind, this is after Wilder's victory over Sergei Lakovic. And let's just say, if you read the article, it's clear that George Foreman's opinion of Big Deontay Wilder, a knockout puncher, is tepid at best. Foreman's not that enthusiastic. All Foreman can say about Wilder is that there's hope that Wilder might do things in the ring. Hope. With Andy Ruiz, Foreman's literally telling you that in 30 months, Ruiz is going to be heavyweight champion. I hope the boxing hardcore consider that. I hope you give Ruiz a very hard look. Let me just say, there are other guys out there right now getting a lot more publicity. Right? Seth Mitchell, for example. I think Andy Ruiz is much better than Seth Mitchell. Right? So as they pub heavyweights, you need to think it through. If Ruiz were to fight Deontay Wilder, I'd be rolling with Andy Ruiz in that fight, and I'm guessing. As I look over my shoulder in the betting line, I'd see Big George Foreman. Let's talk about the other story that caught my eye. Robert Hellenius, current fighter, talking about two guys he's been in the ring with sparring. One's named David Hay. The other is named Tyson Fury. He's been in the ring with both. Right? Now, interestingly enough, Hellenius also has, and we'll get to this, an opinion on who wins. The Vladimir Klitschko versus Alexander Povetkin fight. First, let's talk Hey Fury. Hellenius disagrees with me. I think Tyson Fury wins that fight. Hellenius, who knows the fighters obviously much better than I do, thinks David Hay wins that fight. But what I want you to do is I want you to actually read his comments. He says Hay's more explosive. I'll agree with that. He is one, simply put, he's one of the hardest punchers pound for pound in the sport of boxing. He just happens to be a heavyweight. But if Hay were a middleweight, he'd still be one of the hardest punchers pound for pound in the sport. Hellenius feels that Hay is more explosive. And let's face it too, Hay is faster, hand speed wise. Probably, you know, um, in, in, in terms of the element of surprise. Hay is more sudden than Tyson Fury, right? But interestingly enough, Hellenius continues to talk. And Hellenius says that Tyson Fury is very good inside. He also points out that Tyson Fury is very strong mentally, had to get up off the canvas against Steve Cunningham to win that fight. My point is simply that this fight might not be determined on explosiveness and hand speed. This fight might be determined on boxing skills and foot speed. I believe Tyson Fury should be able to smother David Hay. We'll see that fight when it happens. Just understand that a man who's been in the ring with both is picking David Hay in the matchup. What this also should tell you is just how serious these guys are. Right behind the scenes, Hay and Fury are sparring with other elite contenders, right? So just be aware of that. Now, interestingly enough, Alenius gives his opinion on Klitschko against Povetkin. 
and Hellenius is going with the underdog. Right now, let me point out, I made a video probably over a month ago here online, certainly several weeks ago, where I too picked Alexander Povetkin over Vladimir Klitschko. What I want people to do is to realize that whatever the Las Vegas odds are, style-wise, Povetkin has an opportunity here. In fact, let me just say this. I think there's several fights on the horizon this fall, and we'll get into them video by video. I've put up some of the videos already, in which I feel you're dealing with very live underdogs. Understand that this is one of those rare fights where Vladimir Klitschko is not going to be the best athlete in the ring, right? Povetkin, when he's ready, just, in my opinion, has the better reflexes, the better quickness, the better ability to get inside, the better ability to move around the ring than Vladimir Klitschko, who to me is a little bit stiff by comparison. Make no mistake, both of these guys are excellent athletes, right? But in my opinion, Povetkin is just a little bit more coordinated. The question is going to be, how does Povetkin deal with Klitschko's jab? My point to you is that Povetkin was able to literally duck under, punch his throne by Marco Huck, who's faster than Vladimir Klitschko, right? Povetkin can actually get low. What's interesting, though, is Hellenius continues talking. And Hellenius says that his concern is that Povetkin has to come in the ring ready to fight for 12 rounds, right? The knock on Povetkin from that Marco Huck fight, which was a very important fight, is that Povetkin has a little bit of Saul Alvarez in him. He seems to need to pace himself at times. He looked very tired against Marco Huck. If you want a recipe for disaster, just try being tired while you're in the ring against Vladimir Klitschko. In any event, just understand that I'm not the lone nut out there who believes that Alexander Povetkin has a chance to pull the upset, right? Elite heavyweight Robert Hellenius feels the same way. Povetkin in my opinion, might even be able to get a knockout in the fight. Because if you look at the Corey Sanders knockout of Vladimir Klitschko way back when, you're going to see that a shorter man who's able to get inside and open up on Vladimir Klitschko can do a lot of damage. Klitschko's inside game, to me, consists of trying to pull the opponent close to him, right? If Povetkin prevents him from doing so by throwing heavy volume and by moving laterally inside, Klitschko might not have any answers, right? If you're looking for upsets, I hope you read Robert Hellenius' comments about this fight. I, too, believe Alexander Povetkin has a good chance of pulling one when that fight happens. But just understand... You're swimming upstream against the tide of public opinion. Vladimir Klitschko is widely viewed by many as the best heavyweight in the world, right? I mentioned David Hay earlier in this video. Vladimir Klitschko be David Hay, right? People view him as a better athlete than the superior Klitschko, in my mind, Vitaly Klitschko. Right? So just understand, if you go to a party with a bunch of boxing hardcore and you start talking about Alexander Povetkin, you might get laughed at. My point to you, though, is Povetkin is no laughing matter. Like Robert Hellenius, I, too, am picking him to upset Vladimir Klitschko. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Again, the two pieces can be found at a website called BoxingScene.com and let me just point out too don't limit yourself on that website to these two articles that's an excellent website that I think deserves a daily look thanks for stopping by